21st, this Friday, will be our family game night at 6 p.m. Uh, other upcoming events, July 4th is coming up, and you are all invited to celebrate Independence Day with St. E, bring fireworks, and a picnic dinner. The fun will start at 5.30 p.m. We will have water games, tie-dye, and ice cream, and we'll shoot fireworks when it gets started. Join us for an evening of fellowship. Also, July 4th, during that day, the office will be closed for Independence Day. Please remember to pick up your copy of the Upper Room devotionals at either sanctuary entrance. And as always, please fill out the attendance tab at the end of your pews to know that you are here to worship with us.
time, you may remain seated. You may remain seated as we sing together in number 393, Spirit of the Living God. Today's scripture reading can be found in Acts 17, verses 28 through 32. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone. An image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now we, now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given us assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed. But others said, we will hear you again about this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our text this morning occurs in Athens. Paul has been brought here to escape violent opposition. And in Athens, he preaches in the synagogues and the marketplace. Epicureans bring him to the Areopagus, wanting to know more. And after this speech, a few Athenians turn to Paul and to the gospel, and then he departs Athens for Corinth. But the verses ahead of the ones we just heard Establish Paul's location in the Areopagus and praises the devotion of the Athenian men gathered. He is brought here where his ideas and perhaps he himself are put on trial. The Athenians, at least Acts Athenians, claim to be curious about all things, especially those ideas new to them. They were accustomed to spending their time seeking novelty. Then Luke lays out Paul's reason for speaking. To declare the truth of the unknown God. Verses 23 through 26 begin Paul's theological statement. God, Paul argues, does not dwell in buildings, nor in 
Lord God, serve by human beings as the creator of all my need in Rather, God has made from one all peoples of the earth for the purpose of dwelling on the earth in fixed boundaries and seeking after God who is never far away. So now we hear the opening words of today's text. For in him we live and move and have our being. In light of this unknown God, Paul's primary proposition for the Athenians was to deeply affirm that this unknown God was indeed the creator of heaven and earth, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. And because this unknown God is the creator of the heaven and earth, the God might be unknown to the Athenians. The Athenians are not unknown to God. And because they are known by God, the Holy Spirit is working in them, advocating for them. As United Methodists, we believe in convenient grace, the grace that goes before, the grace that is moving in us, whether we recognize it or not, bringing us glimpses of the kingdom of God, inviting us into deeper relationship with God and with one another. It is the grace that invites us into transformation. In 1741, John Wesley preached a sermon titled, The Almost Christian. In this sermon, he preached the law an almost Christian lives an outwardly Christian life in every way. An altogether Christian adds to this love for God and neighbor and genuine faith, trust and confidence in God's love for them through the merits of Jesus Christ. Recently, John Wesley's manifesto has been circulating in several of my different pockets of United Methodist friends. And those in Sunday school this morning got a little sneak peek of it. And while John Wesley never wrote a manifesto, the list that we are now calling his manifesto has been compiled through writings and settings of John Wesley. And it was written by a historical consultant at the New Room in Bristol, England, which is the church that Wesley built himself. The manifesto includes reduce the gap between the rich, rich people and poor people, help everyone to have a job, help the poorest, including introducing a living wage, offer the best possible education, Help everyone feel they can make a difference. Promote tolerance. Promote equal treatment of women. Create a society based on values and not on profits and consumerism. End all forms of slavery. Avoid getting into wars. Care for the environment. And share the love of God with them. So as we continue to be the church, the church that was started long ago, we are reminded that these things are the foundation of our faith. We are reminded also that we are called to be all together Christians. We are reminded that yes, we are called to do these things in the manifesto, but unless these things are rooted in our deep faith, and belief in Christ, we are simply going through the actions of being a Christian. We must live transformed lives inside and out and be people who invite others into transformation. Which means that the way we talk about the gospel matters. 
The Wesleys preach tirelessly about the ways in which the Holy Spirit always advocates for us and never against us. The way we invite others into transformation matters. God is on our side. We must only sit still. For God so loved the world. God sent Christ not to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. How we talk about the gospel matters. Because we are extending the invitation so that people might want to hear more. And so as we continue to be the church, we are reminded that the Holy Spirit is active and moving through us, through St. B, through our community, and through the world. We are reminded that the Holy Spirit is acting, is moving, is present for us. And we are reminded that the story of Acts did not end. We are reminded that we are, li are living the continuation of the work that was done so many millennia ago. And so again this morning, we're going to get out, I am going to get out of the Holy Spirit's way. We are going to stop and make room to intentionally listen for what the Holy Spirit might be saying to us today. For those of you here last week, you are now at least a little bit familiar with this process of Lectio Divina. You are invited to assume a posture of prayer that is comfortable for you. You can close your eyes or leave them open. And I'm going to read the scripture through several times. And as you listen to the scripture, you are invited to notice what words or phrases stick out to you. If you find your mind wandering, that's okay. Just take a deep breath in and exhale and return to those words. I invite you now to take a deep breath in and exhale. Deep breath in. in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being, like, being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and soul. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. Stone, created by art and man's device, 
and the times of this ignorance God we that. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. God, we live, move, and exist. As some of your own poets said, we are his offspring. Therefore, as God's offspring, we have no need to imagine that the divine being is like a gold, silver, or stone image made by human skill and thought. God overlooks ignorance of these things in times past, but now directs everyone, everywhere, to change their hearts and lives. This is because God has set a day when he intends to judge the world justly by the man he has appointed. God has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection from the dead, some began to ridicule Paul. However, others said, we'll hear from you about this again. Yes, that is gracious to give to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to further your kingdom of honor, so we might transform the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
few and has more people than it can almost contain. <laughs> Thank you for the penny laughs. I deeply appreciate them. <laughs> Are there any others?
moral and visible God only wants. Remembering that the Holy Spirit is working with us and through us and for us.